From Ilmadam to Inganish, Mascazoni to Glace Bay, women are doing things in Cape Breton. They are building businesses. They are driving change. They're creating innovation. And this series of videos will talk about these great women and what they're doing. They'll inspire you. They'll encourage you to see the opportunities and the potential of building and running a business. This is only the beginning of what I think is an enormous movement towards growth on Cape Breton Island. I believe uh, women are going to lead the way in terms of growing businesses, becoming entrepreneurs, getting into business, whether it's fintech, whether it's clean tech, whether it's the health services business, whether it's tourism related business, whether it's breweries, whether it's cider breweries, all these things will really, really make a difference to create jobs and build the economy that Cape Breton needs. We need young people to sustain this beautiful place to live. And I believe this is where it's going to come from. Entrepreneurship and encouraging people to be entrepreneurial is a cultural thing. And I guess that in order for us to, to reach the point where we have that diversified economy where people feel as though they can start businesses and run businesses here, they, they need to feel as though it's part of the culture. I notice a huge shift, huge shift, even in just the past five years. It feels just more vibrant and it feels much more alive. That feeling is what reinvigorates a place. That's what does it. What causes it is a cultural shift where people can own their own destinies. And that's what entrepreneurship does. And that's why we need entrepreneurship all over the island. All over the island, in every single sector, that's, that's the solution to the problem that we've got going on. Entrepreneurs and small businesses in Cape Breton, they just kind of work together. And it's really important to, to focus on Cape Breton rather than always focusing on the mainland of Nova Scotia. And Having businesses, starting businesses, is filling in those gaps, those services that we need. And my goal is to fill in one gap just so that women don't have to go to Halifax or go to the Valley or whatever. So that's why it's important that people are looking at what's missing and serving the needs of our community in Cape Breton so that we can just stay here, you know that we don't have to constantly be going afar to get those needs met. I think small businesses and entrepreneurs are important in Cape Breton because of the people we have. I think people think that they need to leave to do something and that Cape Breton doesn't have a lot to offer them. Um, but if they start creating those opportunities here, then I think we'd be a better community for it. Entrepreneurs and small businesses are important to Cape Breton because it's a a more gradual growing area and their commitment to stay here is because they love it here. It's they, their roots are embedded here and, and they're, they want to bring up their family here and and they want to support the economy. Like, you know, we started a business here and mine's a social enterprise. So, you know, for everyone that invests in, into my business, I reinvest right back into the community, into the women that I work with, to the youth that I work with. So in, in our community, we're more apt to, small business anyway, we'd be more apt to support the greater community. Small businesses infuse a lot of flavor and personality into it a community mm -hmm. and I don't know can you imagine ever going to a town and not seeing small mom-and-pop shops and it definitely brings out the character of the people who live there. Small businesses are important to Cape Breton because they connect history, they connect our people and they connect our culture so if you're visiting here and you are traveling the, the Cabot Trail for example what you see on the Cabot Trail is presented to you mostly by small businesses. Other than our beautiful outdoor spots in the Highlands and other places, that is how you fall in love with Cape Breton. I think they are what build an experience that allows tourists to leave and feel like they became a part of Cape Breton. Um, small business here has transformed how I see the island and I've lived in Nova Scotia my whole life. 
people come here and they're actually like very surprised with like what the island has to offer. So it's nice seeing like innovative businesses moving here and we would love, love to continue seeing that like smaller businesses that are like setting up shop here, providing jobs, you know, it's, it's great. It's a beautiful, wonderful place to like live and raise a family and affordable too. So if you, we can continue to attract businesses like this, then I think that Cape Breton has a really viable future. And you know, it's a shame when people are born here and from here and want to be here and can't be. So I don't know, it's like we feel like really hopeful for 10 to 20 years from now. <laughs> yeah. My vision for Cape Breton in 10 to 20 years is a place where my children feel like they have the option to stay here. When we were growing up here, it was really like right away, you finished high school, you were off the island, you went to Halifax and nobody came home. So I think it's really exciting to be here and to be working on something that potentially will employ people. And I think that's what is really important for Cape Breton. I think that we need to create jobs and keep people home because it's cool here. I would like Cape Breton to be someone's first thought in terms of a place to live for a young person. Growing up, you were kind of encouraged to leave, which can be beneficial because you leave, you learn, you grow, and then you come back. But it would be nice if it wasn't a place you had to escape in order to grow. I would like there to be a lot of initiatives within the island that were encouraging young people to stay. My vision for Cape Breton in the next 10 to 20 years, I think that would have to be that not as many families and young people moving away. The kids don't grow up waiting for the day that they can move away. For us to create an economy and an environment where people want to stay here, or not even just that they want to, because I think that they can stay here. We're not a large industry area. We do have some large industry here, but we're not a hub of industry. But what we do have is a lot of people with great survival skills and the ability to understand what it takes to, uh, to be self-made. That's part of who we are. It's part of the beat of Cape Breton, and it's very, very important. So small business is what really moves the economy, and they tend to have a longer and a more loyal base. It's been a really interesting experience for me, spending time in rural Canada. I've also lived in, in Newfoundland for a while um, and it was really nice for me to see the opportunities that are available. Um, I come from the UK and a lot of people think, oh well it must be difficult coming from away to a place where there's nothing happening. There's so much here and there's so much opportunity here. We, there's so many great things and we're not competing with the same numbers of people. If we put it out there that we're interested and we want an opportunity and we're willing to work for it and we're willing to do everything that we can and give back, those opportunities are here and that's a really great thing. Cape Britain's wonderful for that. There's so many positives to living here and to working here. Um, so I think if we took a little bit more time to celebrate um, you know, some of the successes of the island, then it would just create uh, you know, almost like an incubator yeah. for more people to want to, to live, work, and yeah. build their families and their lives here. I think that our vision for Cape Breton Island is that the conversation shifts. It has shifted, it is shifting, but I think we have a lot more work to do. For other women, I'd advise uh, to keep working at it. it. It's not something that comes along easily or quickly if, if, it's, if you don't have everything to begin with. You know, I decided later in my life to, to start something new, something that I've always been interested in. So it took a while. I had to get some education about it. I went to culinary for a few years and then after that I spent another couple of years just building it, right? Building it, getting this and that. So it's not quick, but, but keep at it. And then you can build it into something that you really want. Cape Breton should never stop them. So the location should never. I mean, it's obvious nowadays. We can do anything, anywhere, anytime. But they should never think that it can't be done in Cape Breton. It absolutely can be done in Cape Breton. It's just to have the, you know, to, to, to be able to take that risk is, is a, is a big thing. But I think we need to risk it because we, we should be part of the solution and not part of the problem. 
I think that given the way the world is right now and how it's shrinking in all kinds of ways, I think that Cape Breton is in a really great position, especially for artists to make things that they share with the world. So I think as individuals, it's very empowering to start your own business and it creates a new narrative that we can be inspired by and it can move us forward and into better places. You know, Cape Breton has had its challenges and opportunities. And I see an enormous opportunity in the growth of women entrepreneurs in Cape Breton. I see this economy growing. I see families uh, being built. And that's what we need. Cape Breton needs to grow. And the women in Cape Breton have been extraordinarily strong all through the years. They have supported their husbands when they went underground in the mines and then steel plants. They manage their families. They're businesswomen. And if we can take and encourage and be inspired by them, this next and next generation, to become the entrepreneurs, to build families, to grow this economy, what a wonderful legacy that will be.